So what we're going to do, you can see there's a bunch of, there's four urine yellow bottles. It has, <laughs> I just had, nine, uh, well, I, for a couple of weeks ago for St. Patrick's Day, or they're green. I usually make them red. I decided to make them yellow. Uh, so, so Southwest, when they loaded my bags, they could have, you know, get a thrill of see these. What's this yellow bottle? Anyway, we got four yellow bottles there. Okay. What we're going to do, this is uh, Aiden Carmichael uh, back in, 2011, she was a freshman taking the experimental course, and she and another student named Hannah Spittler did this experiment, which you're about to participate in. They diluted up uh, a known odor, and they presented it to the rest of their classmates. And they asked them to say how strong it smelled, and they also asked them how good it smelled. Okay, The experimental hypothesis that they came up with, and y'all are going to also prove or disprove, is that an odor will be equally offensive no matter how strong it is. That's our working hypothesis for this experiment. Okay? I already see people thinking, oh, that can't be true. We're going we're gonna to put it to the test. We're like Mythbusters. Mythbusters. Okay. So y'all are going to go one by one, and we have a pretty good group now, so this may take a while. You can go one by one, and y'all are going to sniff that. What you want to do is you uncap it. This is Monica Murray. She graduated in 2008 or so. You're going to uncap it. You can stick your nose right in there if you're brave enough. But I would probably do that number. It does, this one doesn't smell bad. Well, we'll see. I don't think it smells bad. But you're going to tell me your opinion. Okay, you're going to smell of it. And we usually have four cans. And you're going to vote. And there's a little ballot there. For each sample, it's going to say A, B, C, or D, not one, two, three, four. You're going, to ask, you're going to answer to me how strong does it smell and how pleasant is it, okay? You're going to use the same intensity scale that Misselbrooks used, 0 to 6. If it's a 0, what does that mean? I don't smell nothing. In fact, this is, you shouldn't smell anything because it's distilled water, right? shouldn't have a smell. The bottle probably have a little smell. If it's 0, you don't smell nothing. 6, what does that mean? I cannot possibly think of anything that smells stronger than that. Not necessarily bad. It could still smell good. It could be the most intense banana smell I ever smell. Okay? And it, it would wake me up in the middle of the night. So the intensity scale is zero, no odor, six, extremely strong. I cannot imagine anything stronger. Okay? And you're going to rate it all the way from faint, distinct, Strong, very strong. Do it very quickly. Don't spend a lot of time snorting on it. Okay. Do it quick. You're going to smell it. And then you're going to write down also your opinion of how pleasant it smells. And Hannah and uh, Aiden, they wanted to keep the same 0 to 6 scale because we're going we're gonna to graph it. In the class, the students actually graph it. Okay, so they want to have 0 to 6. But how do you show it pleasant versus unpleasant? Right? So you're going to go all the way from minus 3, which is very unpleasant. You cannot imagine anything smelling worse than this. You know, knock the buzzard off the gut wagon. You know, this is so bad. I can't imagine anything worse. If it's a 3, you can't imagine anything better. You know, it's waking up to mom's cinnamon rolls or something. It's just so pleasant. Okay, you're going to smell it. Write down your opinion. We only have, only have one ballot box, but you're going to stuff the ballot box. And then, one by one, you're going to go out that door, and you can come back, or you can skedaddle, okay? So we're going to do it. It's going to take us a little while, so Leslie will start. She'll sniff it. She'll vote. And then the next person, Laura, will do it, and then Jackie. And The, the, the under experiment we're gonna, I'm going to demonstrate that we did, that we give them a bunch of different smells, some of which are good and some of which are bad, and we have some really interesting results of that. Question. Wait till after the experiment. It'll be it'll become a little more clear. 
I have them arranged in such a way that it's not perfect. In fact, we can go back. Uh, the data I have for this particular experiment is not going to show up very well, but we can go back and actually look at the responses, and you can see the first response is different than the second response. And also, there's a phenomenon called odor fatigue. The more you smell it, the less you smell it. So there's a lot. This is not, this is, this is smell. Well, smell science is actually pretty precise. This is not really precise. It's more of a demonstration. Um, but you'll be amazed. I think you'll be amazed. When we see the results, we have some pretty consistent results out of it. And Leslie is about to pass out. It's so horrible. No, because, um, well, I, I, yes and no. Okay. I can tell you what the research says. The research says that there's no difference. Um, and in fact, Carl Van Davender from Arkansas has done some, some kind of demonstration work where they have the nasal ranger. Have you ever seen that where they dilute it? It's kind of a handheld olfactometer. He's done some work with groups from Little Rock and groups from Fayetteville and groups from hog farms. And basically, I mean, it's borne out through the literature that if anything, there's no difference between farm groups and non-farm groups. And if anything, the farm groups react stronger to the bad odors. And the, the perception is they know what a farm should smell like, and this ain't it. Okay, that's the mental process they think they're going through. So that's a common thing. Our students uh, were about, in the last 10 years, we averaged about 20, 30% female, 70, 80% male, probably 50, 50 farm versus, well, not farm. 50% urban Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Lawton, the more urban type areas, 50% uh, small town farm, or probably 10 to 20% hardcore farm kids. Uh, uh, it's pretty, I'm, I'm not going to say lily white, it's pretty much a white audience, we've got a lot of American Indians though, um, but it, it's fairly racially homogenic. Uh, they're all 18, some of them are 26, 27 years old, pretty much 18, 19 years old. So the result you're going to see is, is that sample. Um, well, that's a good question. You, you think a group from Norway, for instance, would react to the smell of fish compared to somebody from Botswana? I don't know. But there probably is a difference. There's a lot of cultural variability in, in when it comes to odor. Any other questions before we move? I jump to the, the anatomy lesson. I'm, I'm, uh, my whole hypothesis is yes, there is, that I can demonstrate through visual and you can perceive it by odor. I mean, by, by looking at these, what's, whatever. I'm hoping that by going through dilution, you develop a sense of, of smell. Now, I've, I really need to do this, and I should have done it this time. We should do pre and post testing and see if we can get, I want to get with somebody over in our statistical services to do this a little bit more precise, but I'd like to find that out. I don't know. But my, my guess is, from the reactions I've had over the last 17 or so years, that, that people get it uh, after the first time they see it. But it's kind of anecdotal. I haven't quit doing it. I only had one group that I thought I was going to get run out of town. It was a group of poultry producers, and actually it was when I showed the OU. You know, the further you get from Stillwater, it, it's like a lot of states that there's... Like in Arkansas, the, everybody's a Razorback fan. The Razorbacks are the professional team of Arkansas, right? OU is not only, the, I mean, they are professional. <laughs> At least they used to be back in the 80s. So anyway, you, you get away from Stillwater, the, the, most of the people are, are OU fans. So I'm over in northeast Oklahoma, and I show up OU, and I'm making these wisecracks, and I'm noticing a couple of guys in the back of the hat with OU, you know, back of the room with OU hats. They didn't like that too well. So that's the only time I, I really had trouble with it. Uh, when I was working with the uh, pork producers, I worked with a group of mash-off contract growers, and that was the best response I ever had. I had people come up to me afterwards and say, you know, it all makes sense now. You know, and I, had, I worked with some car grill growers. Uh, they were polite about it, but I don't think it went over quite as well. So it all depends. And I have good days and bad days, just like everybody else. I think good audiences and 
you know, the poultry producers, they have to be there. They're required by law, so their attitude is probably pretty poor to begin with. That's pretty, that's, yeah, I can't imagine real estate agencies, agents going through with that, but yeah, that would be a good, you know, uh, another thing about the way we do it, these experience, experiments is they're very, there is nothing, next year I'm going to try to do the butanol dilution, I haven't done that yet, but apart from some glassware, this is nothing that you couldn't do yourself, pick your order and go with it. Um, I said when I, when I um, did the abstract for this, that we were going to have handouts with all the labs, uh, I didn't get around doing it. But I'm going to put it up on the web uh, as I get them. It's kind of complicated to get to this point in this particular experiment, and there's a little sheet that tells you how to get there. This is pretty complicated setup. The other one where you're comparing different smells, you just go out and get one. You just get that versus that, and you can do with it what you will. Any other questions? But it'd be neat, you know, to have a scratch and stiff one. But that, you know, that requires a lot of technology. Uh, anybody old enough? For... Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I my first thought when I when I said I was going to do this back last September. Or so my thought is I was going to have a family trip up here, and I was going to bring all the glassware, you know, the uh, volumetric flask and the beaker, and I was going to do all the mixing. And then when uh, decided I'll just come by myself, I was thinking, how am I going to get all the glass? So actually, the, what you're going to smell today, I actually mixed up last Friday. And I did some testing before I came here, and it seems like the responses aren't that different. You can probably go about a week. Depends on how many people have opened them and manipulated them, but they'll last quite a while, at least this particular smell. What I've done is I took... I took uh, 10 milliliters, actually 11 drops of this stuff. I diluted it in 100, no, 500 milliliters of distilled water. So it's a 1 in 100 dilution, was the strongest one, which hopefully y'all thought was the last one. Okay, so that's one in, one in 100. Then I took 200, I took 125 milliliters, diluted that up to 500. So it's a, it's a geometric progression of fours. So the, the strongest is four times stronger than the next one. Um, and then you can see up here, there's the dilution rate. Um, I'm going to show you in a little bit kind of the skew and, and that sort of stuff with the other data that we've collected. And uh, you'll see some of the outliers that Larry would have thrown out. You may see, well, actually, you won't see them here. There is one that I would definitely throw out that I saw in here. I'm, I'm not going to name names, but it was kind of toward the end, Larry. That if you take the dilution on the x-axis and the intensity on the y-axis and you plotted it, we found out exactly what we thought we were going to find out, right? That there is a correlation, there's a, there is a positive relationship between concentration and odor intensity and it is logarithmic. So we've, once again, science has proven correct, okay? Uh, you've, the, the, the equation doesn't mean much, but most of y'all said that the weakest one, which was 1 in 6,400, was a 2, which was kind of, I think that was faint. Where did my ballot box go to? Y'all said it was, uh, the, the odors were between faint and somewhere between distinct and strong. Okay, But this is the plus and minus 1 standard deviation. So you can see there is a lot of opinion. You know, one person, there was one that said it was a 5 negative 1 on the Lequis dilution. Was that you, Larry? Were you screwing her? Uh, I'm not casting any. I mean, this is not, it's opinion. It's, it's not, it, it really smelled 5 and the minus 1. So anyway, uh, the correlation coefficient, the R squared is 0 0.8 or so. 
I've seen a lot of research done on lower correlations than that. Okay, but what was our hypothesis? When we started this, we said we had a hypothesis. What was that hypothesis? And I hadn't even looked to see it. So there should be no correlation between dilution rate and offensive or uh, pleasantness, right? Well, okay, here is dilution rate versus pleasantness. And uh, it doesn't, you know, to me, I'm going to see that and I'm going to look at those standard deviations and I'm going to say that's a flat line. There's no difference between one and the other. But if you looked at the averages, again, I've seen research. <laughs> They've said that's a positive correlation, an R square of 0.6 or so. So this is what the college students, 18, I think most of them were, we may have had a couple of 30 year olds in there. Uh, most of them are 18, 19, two weeks ago, the exact same thing. I mean, it's amazing. Every time I do this, I think it's not going to work. And every time it comes out, that was their correlation between dilution and intensity. They had an R square of 0 0.92. Pretty darn good. Uh, how many noses sampled that? That had an N of 11. So actually, that would be, you really should do this with 30 or more. And y'all did it with 14, but you ended up with, it, was, it wasn't bad what we ended up with. And then their correlation between <clears throat> pleasantness and dilution rate, I would say that they showed a relationship. So on Mythbusters, it would be busted. You know, and that one, the hypothesis probably wouldn't hold. I would say a reasonable scientific doubt that it didn't, didn't work. When Hannah and Aiden did it two years ago, the exact same thing, pretty much the same range. We used the same dilutions. Same perfume, or cheap cologne. Uh, when they did the, when they looked at a, the pleasantness versus dilution, it looked an awful lot like yours. Again, R squared is 0.4. So y'all are feeling pretty good about y'all's hypothesis that, yeah, you know, you can't help it. It smells stronger. You're going to say one thing or the other. Let's look at what the students did two weeks ago. I actually made them smell swine manure and the exact same dilutions. They did the 1 100 down to 1 6400 dilutions. This is their correlation between intensity of swine manure and dilution from 1 to 100 to 1 to 6400. It's almost exactly the same as the perfume, the same dilution. It's a little bit higher. They, they reacted a little bit stronger at the higher dilution rates. It has a wonderful correlation coefficient, 0 0.97. I don't, I've never done an experiment with anything in nature that would have that kind of a, I mean, even bending of steel beams isn't that good. So that's a pretty good, even as crude as this was, we ended up with some pretty darn good. Now, this is the disappointing part. Well, I don't know if it's disappointing, it's the truth. This is their correlation between dilution and offensiveness for swine manure. Is there a correlation there? There's a darn strong correlation there. So I would say myth busted on that one. I think, and it's the, the fact that it was a negative smell versus a positive smell, that that make a difference? We're going to have to look at this again. And I probably, if you went through the scientific literature, you would see that there, there are some kind of... So that's why you really have to, if you're going to do the offensiveness or the pleasantness, or the hedonic tone, or one of the, the character scales, you better dilute your samples to the same intensity, or you're going to bias your results.